Hi, welcome to Wandering Into the Woods, a podcast brought to you by the creators of Adventures with Fiji. I'm Linda. And this is Jarrett. And today we're going to talk to you guys about our trip down to Springwood, Texas, in which we got the chance to take a little summer retreat for the weekend to celebrate Jarrett's birthday out in uh, Living Waters. Living Waters on Lake Travis is a set of cabins out in Spicewood, Texas, right by the lake. This lake is uh, right uh, on the Pitternalis River. Uh, close to the confluence. I think I think a lot of people in the area says Pertinalis. Okay. Per- Pertinalis. <laughs> I can't pronounce that. Okay. The river. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm by the river. It's, uh, by the, it's, it's in the lake area of the river, close to the confluence with uh, which other river, Jared? It's the Colorado. The Colorado. Um, and uh, it's actually really close to that confluence. Um, and Jared was able to pack raft uh, or raft from our location on living waters over to the confluence but we'll talk about that a little bit later yeah um but that's to the that's just to give you an idea of where we were headed um it was about an hour away from where we uh are in northwest austin and we headed out there on a friday evening amidst the middle of uh covid so there was not as much traffic as you would normally expect but it was um, still pretty uh, significant. You are not on any specific highways. You are just on Texas farm roads for most of your trip. And on our way there, because we were already running late, um, we around 6 p.m. we ordered uh, from Casa Nostra, which is about... Pizzeria. Which is an, it's, it's a pizzeria. Pizzeria uh, Casa Nostra. Yeah, and it's... I guess it, it offers you very various good peculiar options you don't get in your everyday um pizzeria like pizza hut i think is what you mean yeah it's just it's just a good unique experience that we really highly recommend them really good pizza which one did we end up getting jared i don't remember the, the name of it i don't remember the name either but what did it have um a meat i don't know i think it was salami uh-huh and then it had arugula and some sort of like cheese dabs i forget which one it was it was a goat cheese wasn't it Probably. Yeah. It, it was really good. We recommend it. Um, I just Plus, can't re- just regular cheese on there. Regular yeah. pizza cr- cheese, but they had dabs of the special cheese. Yeah. So the, the place is called Casa Nostra, and it's 20 minutes away uh, from northwest Austin to uh, over to Spicewood. And once we arrived there, um, we found that the cabins are a little bit closer to each other than they appear to be on the website. Uh, where, we, where we arrived, it's... Um, once you arrive, you realize, oh, you know, you go past this little gate. And we had rented the Romantic Red Room, which is to your right as soon as you enter the complex. And the Romantic Red Room is this one-bedroom uh, cabin with uh, one bed and a, a giant bookcase, a small TV, um, air conditioner, a little tiniest fireplace if you need it for winter time. It's not a real fireplace. It's yeah, just- it's electric. Yeah, I don't think it heat or looks. You think so? Yes. Well, it's the middle of summer, so we couldn't really test. We weren't interested in testing it. No, so. yeah. I looked. It's it's just for looks. It's, it doesn't produce heat. Oh, okay. Well, keep that in mind. There is a window um, AC set. I don't know if also if it's also a heater or what if you need your... Um, if Probably. They also, if they also bring out the heater in the wintertime. Um, they have a nice microwave, a mini fridge... That uh, is actually pretty big, and it has a, little, a full freezer. Yeah, it's it has a full fridge. freezer. I mean, it's a mini fridge, but it has its own freezer door instead of that little box area like your dorm room fridge. Yeah, like I, to give you an idea, you could fit a whole bottle of orange juice in there, uh, one of those Sunny Delight bottles. Um, and uh, you could um, so yeah, and they have the microwave, the toaster oven, and there was also a convection oven. A no. convection, what was it called? It's it's an inductive stove. So it's like a heat plate with a special pot that goes on it. Okay, yeah. And so there's also that available for you. They have a cutting board, a few um, disposable utensils that are eco-friendly as well. Um, knives, forks, plates, um, spoons. Also some wooden spoons for you to use um, there as well. Um, what else, Jared? What else did they have for you? They had snacks for you. They have coffee, uh, creamer, um, just little creature comforts that you miss when you go regular camping, I would say. And then attached to that cabin is... Not uh, attached, just next to. Well, right. 
yeah, right next to it is this other um, smaller cabin with a full size bathtub um, and slash shower, uh, toilet, sink, and right next to it outside is an outdoor shower, and then right above it, right above that, um, on top of it, yeah, on, on top, uh, like I guess the second floor to that little building is. Uh, romantic place for you to set up with your partner it has two small uh, personal hammocks and a tiny table for you to share with your loved one and uh two chairs for you to sit on i think they call it meals. something like a private wine deck on the website yeah and uh really nice setting so as soon as we got there uh we made sure to bring all of our stuff in unpacked did a quick round of exploring to see everything was uh, they also have a floating cabin with some other stuff that you can rent, like paddle boards and kayaks. So we checked that out as well. Uh, once we got settled in, we made a couple of drinks and then went up to the private wine balcony deck thing uh, where we had those drinks and our pizza. Linda got bit by mosquitoes up there yeah, as it was, well. It was just, they they got their, uh, what do you call it, their appetizer that night. Um, and so that's. Pretty much what happened the first night. It was fairly late after we finished our pizza and drinks. Yeah, we just did some light reading and went to sleep. Mm -hmm. That next morning, I woke up pretty early. um, So I had the opportunity to go down to the uh, floating cabin, as they call it, and watch the sunset or sunrise. Sorry. Normally it's sunsets. Who wakes up for sunrises? Uh, So I got up, went down there um, and just sat on the patio of the floating cabinet uh, cabin. Sorry. And watch the sun come up. Unfortunately, um, you know, you would think it would. I mean, the sun normally uh, does the east to west thing. It didn't. It does not all the time. It only does those on the two equinoxes. So it was actually more behind where I was. So I couldn't just see the sunrise over the river and in line with it. It was actually back behind me and behind some trees. It was still very nice, but you know, it wasn't kind of the pic- picturesque uh, sunrise over the river that I was hoping for. Yeah, I remember you had been very enthusiastic about waking up early just so that uh, you could have your whiskey sour yep. uh, first thing. And that was, uh, I guess, a peaceful, nice experience for it you. It was. Yeah. And then you came back, you went back to bed. I mm-hmm. was still in bed. Um, and uh, then we got up and we uh, made breakfast there using that induction. Inductive stove. Inductive stove, yeah. yeah and the one little pan they had. And the one pan because you have to use a special pan for that. Um, and, uh, we figured that out and we made ourselves some bacon and eggs and toast and had that for breakfast, some coffee there as well. Um, and we, um, just, uh, after that we went, what did we do? Um, I think I read for a while. We read for a while. You watched a little bit of your shows that you had pre-saved on Netflix, even though they do have, um, Wi-Fi and it was pretty strong. But they do have a disclaimer on their website stating that, you know, the Wi-Fi isn't always as strong as it can be because you're out in the outskirts of the hill country. But we seem to have a strong signal that on Saturday morning. And then, um, you know, we, after uh, reading for a while and watching some TV, we got inspired. We felt inspired and we went outside to practice our photography uh, skills, uh, oh, yeah. particularly for Jared and... And what we, they offer great premises for doing that. They have three or four grills. uh, They have three grills for you out there. Um, Two table, at least two tables. They have hammocks. They have group tables um, under the shade. And they also have this, this beautiful like um, stone step uh, stairway that goes from the houses out onto the, the lake, the boathouse. Um, and as you are taking those steps down to the boathouse, you also walk by a, an, an artificial fountain that does a good job of looking real. Waterfall. Yeah, waterfall. It's not a fountain so much. But, but it's a fa- it works like a fountain, right? I guess, yeah. It probably has a fountain pump, but it's, it's yeah. to look like a waterfall and it flows down. Yeah, so, so that looks really nice and it sounds really peaceful. Um, and uh, there's... Uh, and there's also a boat ramp for if, for those of you who make arrangements to take boats there as well, or if you rent the boat that they have there. Um, so we uh, practiced our photography skills, and after that, we went out for a swim um, out in the lake, and that was really nice. River. Well, but isn't it called Lake Travis? Not yet. But it's living waters on Lake Travis. I know, but it's not Lake Travis yet, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Lake Travis is further down. 
All right. Well, this is the Pertinalis River, uh-huh. and Lake Travis is the Colorado River. All right. Well, we're out there in the water. Yeah. It's pretty deep. Probably. Um, luckily for uh, those of us that aren't great at swimming, such as myself, um, I had taken a life vest, but they also have, or actually Jared took that life vest for me, and they have other life vests available there. They have some tire floaties as well, um, and some, one of those, what are they called, the other? Pool noodles? Yeah, pool noodles as well. They have also these little things that you can put the pool noodles in, and they're like a floating pad. Mm-hmm. That's what those oval long shape people size things are Mm -hmm. they have like a a sheath on the outside that you can run pull pull floaties through oh cool and lay on them so yeah we were out there for a while swimming enjoying ourselves having a a good time out in the sun um i got a nice little tan did you yeah and um there were a couple other groups there there was a group of uh outdoors people it was like three girls and two men Outdoors I don't know what people. to call them. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, they were a group of people out there. Three women, two men who were also there. We shared, so we shared the boathouse with them. Um, and uh, as we were walking back after that, we saw some teenagers coming as well with their cooler down to the boathouse. Yeah, and they had to stop and regroup because they didn't expect anyone to be down there. Which is crazy considering you see like once you're there like, was it four or five cabins that they have out there? Yeah, and some of them um, hold several group, like a group, larger groups of people. So, yeah. anyway, so um, after that, I took a shower in the outdoor shower, um, which I loved. Um, but Jared does wasn't a fan, so he went inside and and used the indoor shower. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we uh, went back. What did we do? Oh, you napped. I napped. Yes. Yeah, I watched some more. Yeah. Some more stuff on my phone. And then after that break, we I had some coffee and you went back out. No, we did burgers. Oh, that's right. We mm-hmm. grilled burgers. Um, Jarrett used their uh, gas. Gas grill. Gas it's grill. Faster. We yeah. bought charcoal and everything, but they had gas out there for you. So that was yeah. much quicker and, and we, simpler. And I had made the horrible mistake of not planning my nap, which I should have. And so we just, we were hungry by the time I woke up. So we just had to, uh, we used the gas grill. Uh, made ourselves some good burgers there, and uh, yeah, then Jarrett went out for um, his uh, rafting adventure, and yeah. I stayed um, back riding outside on, at the wine deck for a while. Yeah, it was about seven. It was still pretty hot, so I was like, "Oh man, I'm gonna go around seven while we we're eating burgers." And then I looked at my watch, and I'm like, "Okay, it's essentially seven, so I better go." Yeah. So I got the old pack raft out. Uh, I paddled upstream for about a mile. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pretty smooth other than people doing a lot of wake. Uh, so it's pretty miserable Mm -hmm. in a self-powered boat with no current. I guess going upstream with no current is easy, but you don't get the fun of going downstream. Right. And having any, any force behind you. Um, so I went up, uh, there's a couple of inlets that you can look at. There's tons of people with cabins, floating cabins with their boats that are, that are docked there and stuff. Um, a couple of inlets that look cool. Uh, once I made it out, you know, about a mile, I turned around and came back. Uh, for whatever reason, I was pretty pretty exhausted by the time I made it back to our area. Mm-hmm. But I kept going. I went down. I didn't go to like full on to the confluence where the two rivers meet. Mm-hmm. I just went to the point of the Pertinalis where I could see both. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's I mean it's just big and wide. That's all it is because mm-hmm. of the dams and it turning into Lake Travis, either at there technically or shortly after so it's just big and wide so it's not like a a confluence like the other colorado river Uh uh-huh and you know the west where a creek runs into it and it's you know powerful and turbulent and things like that so just big and wide and looks more like a lake Uh, after that it was pretty much sunset so i took a couple of pictures uh saw a baby raccoon doing baby raccoon things at the very edge of the river Mm -hmm. and uh Headed back at that point. That's nice. And in the meantime, I was just, like I said, writing and uh, getting eaten by mosquitoes. I came out with like 15 mosquito bites, even though I was wearing bug spray and had that um, candle on. But, that you know, that's just Texas in the summer by the water. Uh, so I made it back. I didn't feel hungry at the time. Mm-hmm. So I made the mistake of brushing my teeth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then after like cooling down for, I don't know, 30 minutes or 45 minutes or so, I was like, oh, man, now I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. 
So I had to have a snack and then brush my teeth again. Yeah. And then we called it a night. And then the next morning we rose and packed our stuff and made oh, sure that... Going back, we what? forgot one thing. I flew, the dr- I flew the drone for a while. Oh, that's true. You so did. So after we had breakfast, before you napped, we mm-hmm. were at the at the boathouse and I flew flew the drone for about 20 minutes on the river. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then you came back and had your nap. Yeah. And then, no, no, you you did reading. Well, we it just we got we got the chance yeah. to also sit out there at the boat, um, out on the boathouse, and you got to fly your drone. It was a couple of peaceful minutes that we got a while there by ourselves without other other people there. Yeah. Um, if you do go to Living Waters on Lake Travis, it seems like the mornings are the best time to catch some alone time out in that boathouse. Yeah, definitely. Because I went after we woke up on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went back out. I don't know. Was it like eight? Maybe yes. Nine. And, it was around eight. Yeah, and flew my drone, and no one was out. There was like one lady, mm-hmm. like laying out in that big hammock in the big common area. Right. But yeah, it was just me down there. There wasn't a whole lot of boats yet. I yeah. I don't know if it's because it was Sunday or or not, but it was still early, so it was pretty much just me out there and no boats. So it was pretty calm. Yeah, and then uh, we packed up. Uh, we made sure that we left everything um, almost as pristine as we found it. Made sure that we. Washed our dish, the dish, the pan that we used, um, and clean cleaned the place much as much up as we could, and uh, we then we packed up and came home, and that was uh, that was our weekend out on Living Waters and Lake Travis. Yeah, so not an adventure, but it's an adventure. Yeah, it gave us a chance to grow in our artistic skills with the Jared's photography. Um, think about my writing and uh, with the. Also gave Jared the chance to do some kayak, um, not kayaking, rafting out there. So yeah. that was nice. It's not something we get to do out here at home every day. It's more of a resort, essentially. You know, it's kind of what it is. Yeah. And it's actually, um, if you make reservations at Living Waters Lake Travis, I do recommend that at the time you make your reservations, you, um, if you want to do the uh, yoga add-on packages or the massage package, that you do them with um, way ahead of time because... At, Hopefully at the time of your reservation, because we made the mistake of waiting until uh, the week of the our trip, and it was too late to make arrangements for getting a massage um, for Jared and me. So keep that in mind. Well, guys, thank you for listening to us talk about our trip to Living Waters out in Lake Travis, um, out in Springwood, Texas. If you liked what you heard or would like to hear about other adventures or other places to visit in Texas... Read about some of Jared's and my adventures over the years at adventureswithbg.com. And to see some of the pictures from this trip or this trip or others, uh, you can visit and follow us on Adventures with BG on Instagram and Facebook. As always, if you like this podcast, don't forget to subscribe or follow it in your favorite podcasting app. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go ahead and leave us a five-star review. That'd be really cool of you. And as always, stay safe as you wander into the woods.